Thank you so much for your presentation, Professor Rukmini. Mm -hmm. uh, it is uh, very interesting, I think, the way in which you you invoke uh, Indian philosophy in, as a possible answer to contemporary issues. And I'd like to invite Professor Satpati to also say a few words about uh, your presentation. Thank you, Elena. So it's good to see you again. Yes. So we have met in person. We are also meeting virtually time and again. And uh, of course, a special thanks to Dana for organizing such a useful and, uh, you know, uh, something I should say the need of the hour, uh, which all of us uh, put a little bit of, uh, uh, should I say, negligence, or maybe we are in the rat race. You know, so uh, if uh, I talked about, uh, you know, Rukmani's, uh, Dr. Rukmani's uh, talk, it was absolutely highly philosophical. And at the same time, even I agree that eternal values such as, uh, you know, honesty, integrity, compassion, forms the foundation of character. And these are co uh, crucial for fostering uh, ethical behavior and our work uh, profiles. But nevertheless, so uh, like my, uh, I would just like to ask you something that is, you know, uh, is it like that, that can we integrate education along with this value education? Or do we need to let go of technology? Because probably we cannot. And it is, uh, if we look into it, it is because of the technology. We are, all of us are sitting in different parts of the country as you and me towards the extreme and, of course, uh, again, uh, beyond borders. So when we are meeting together, it is somehow the contribution of technology. So can we uh, just say that we can integrate, as you said, the paradigm shift? Yes, of course. The shift has already taken place, but uh, nevertheless, can we integrate this with this technology and value education? Yeah, we can integrate uh, this. We need to integrate. We need to keep pace with the changes that is happening in its own uh, ages. But today, unfortunately, technology, that is, it is like technology should not master us. We should master technology. So we need to be, uh, it's like a coexistence. We should not uh, give space to master, uh, technology should not master us. We should uh, use it as a tool, as an instrument that facilitates us. Otherwise, uh, you know, again, the debate, uh, technology versus humanity and the AI and all those things, will be creating a havoc and there are many uh, uh, literature that uh, is coming into existence in the form of books, articles stating that a vision 20, uh, you know, 2047 world is going to end or, uh, you know, the entire human race and all those things. So, yes. Yeah, probably. But uh, at the same time, uh, what I understand is, you know, mm -hmm. uh, if this behavioral patterns you know, mm -hmm. and if this values could be, uh, though, you know, every individual, as I understand, has mm -hmm. these values within themselves. It is mm -hmm. only at a time that they uh, need to, uh, you know, brush it up once again, because mm -hmm. everybody understands about integrity. Everybody understand about our conscious behavior. And mm -hmm. I think we do not accept things which is not acceptable to us. Say, for example, all of us would like to be respected. That's mm -hmm. a kind of an innate feeling in all of us. We don't yes. like to be disrespected, whether yes. it is a student, a teacher, whoever it is. So mm -hmm. uh, having said that, what I understand and perceive is we cannot, uh, you know, totally go beyond this because technology has uh, become a part and parcel. Yes, as you said, the dominant part of it mm -hmm. can be avoided to some extent, but keeping in view the enrichment that we already have so to enhance those skills, I think that would be a added, uh, you know, kind of a, a thing which we can do. As in India, let me tell you for, uh, you know, uh, my friends across borders that we have, uh, uh, you know, these days we have started a course that is universal human values. Yeah. So that course, basically, it doesn't, uh, you know, teach basically spirituality, but as uh, Rukmani very rightly stated about uh, the, you know, uh, the kind of conflicting ideas that we are having. And I think as the students are with us today, 
So I think each one of us, whether in India or uh, uh, abroad, every one of us have this kind of a conflict in our mind that what am I and what I want to be. So this kind of a thing, it always has some sort of a conflict in our mind and it persists till we grow up. Because I'm not very sure of what am I and what I want to be. And in between technology comes, inhumanity comes, humanity comes. Sometimes we are again with our own confused thoughts. That is, I want to do this. I want to do this. I don't have a coherence between desire, thought and expectations. And they are all conflicting because it goes with my own assumptions. So this is something what we are doing uh, towards the progress of understanding of values which is, of course, as very rightly stated by Rukmani, that it is fading. And the fading of values doesn't result in any kind of a universal brotherhood. Because we all are, you know, we have, uh, as we are into philosophy, and Elena also teaches Hindi. So there is an expression that we use in India. And that is why we are very good hosts uh, for everybody who comes to India. That is Vasudeva Kutumbakam. That is the entire universe is one place where we all are connected to each other. We are not creating any connections. It is eternally there present in us because it is a correlation between myself and the other self who has the same kind of feelings what I have, whether it is here or anywhere else. So uh, this is how, you know, but what we are uh, at present getting into, that is we are getting into some sort of a animal consciousness where we are, uh, you know, uh, very uh, wrongly uh, getting into things which we really don't understand whether I should do it or I shouldn't do it. So we have to inculcate a kind of human consciousness, a conscious behavior where I realize what have I, what am I and what I want to be. So this gap is very vital. And I think uh, not taking much of time because, you know, it is philosophy and I am sure this is a new area which the students will be interested, I'm sure. And so it's open for the students. May I please welcome uh, the students and even if, of course, their mentors, Elena and uh, Dana, if they have some questions. So please go ahead with it. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you so much. Uh, well, before I invite the students, because I'm sure they must have some ideas and questions, I also have a question um, uh, because, uh, you know, I mean, when we say universal um, in uh, the con contemporary, let's say, context, academic research, uh, thinking about the post-structuralist paradigm that promotes the idea of diversity, plurality, difference. So then how do you think we can reconcile, you know, this idea, I mean, the post-structuralist post um, focus on uh, difference with uh, this transcendent disposition that is uh, so typical, let's say, of Indian philosophy. Um, so how to do, <laughs> to find, in a way, um, a the middle path between these visions. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, with reference to this, uh, why is there something uh, called post-humanistic world? Mm -hmm. Post-humanistic world. Why are we terming this age as post-humanistic world? So when we look into that, the post-structuralism and the other stuff, in the structuralistic point of view itself, the entire structure was given more importance. So in this, again, uh, talking about uh, uh, an Indian uh, philosopher, uh, it's so, uh, you know, uh, there is an um, uh, entire poetical composition stating that don't be driven away by the structures. Again, if I look at you, you are very fair. Right. Again, the identities, the external identities have been, you know, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> personified, Ex you know, <coughs> have given emphasized. Whereas to look at the commonality, so there we need to work upon. So invasions have been taking place. History repeats itself, but can't we stop the history that is repeating again and again? What is history when we look into <clears throat> uh, the invasions and discoveries? I want to be superior. So this is a master-slave relationship. 
the binary concepts, the human complexities again and again comes into the, ourselves. And huge lessons have been taught by the history. It's very plain and clear. We learn, we need to learn from the mistakes that others have. But if we ourselves are still going on entering and entering the same mistake, then <clears throat> so we need yes. to restore that humanism, uh, mystic element in us. Then what is again humanity, human race? Human race, we need to be, it's like a kind of, a, I, I should not use the word live and let live, but it's a coexistence, right? From the micro to the macro level. It's a coexistence together. If we go to a forest, look at the beauty of the, the tree, which is diverse in its nature. The rivers, the valleys, the mountains, the tigers, the lions, and everything. Everything has life in its own, uh, mm, you know. So, one second. Yeah, Indeed, and probably. I also uh, can add up to this, you know, when we uh, read the poems of uh, the Roma the age of romanticism, so there's uh, poems of Wordsworth Shelley, so there was already an idea of pantheism <coughs> which they could find in nature, that is, uh, you know, the existence of God, and uh, Daffodils is such a beautiful poem, I think uh, it has come from ages, and even when yes. we recite it now, it also lifts, uh, gives us some sort of a solace. So, uh, you know, this is what basically actually uh, what we are trying to build in, actually we should be trying to build in. That is, uh, you know, industrial revolutions are always uh, quite hazardous and we, we cannot let go of it. History also to some extent will be repeating because uh, there are certain changes inevitable. And so we have to be a little adaptable to the change, but at the same time, we have to restore our value system. So may it be in any uh, kind of a place or, uh, you know, wherever we are. So when we are trying to restore our <laughs> value system, so we have to understand as, as if what are the values are we talking? Are there certain scriptures? Are there certain mandates that we have to follow? It is nothing like that. There are certain, you know, in, uh, I could say certain proposals, which we have to verify within our own right. If it is verifiable, then it is universal. If it is not verifiable, then it is not yes. uh, universal. Supposing right. I tell you a question as that is uh, what is uh, that is we all want together, you know, organizing this kind of events, me going to Romania, you coming to India, which I very badly look forward to. And, uh, you know, together, all of us uh, meeting. So and for everything that we do, the jobs that we are doing, uh, the professions we choose, uh, whatever it is. So the money that we earn. So behind all this, all of us have a single uh, motto that is being happy. So being happy at the cost of what? Exactly. So this is what we have to understand. And if being happy at the cost of our own, uh, you know, misunderstanding, which is again, we always look forward as uh, Dr. Rukmani very rightly said that, you know, artificial intelligence, we are trying to just, uh, you know, camouflage the name of intelligence when, uh, you know, and self doubt ourselves. So if we want to be happy, then what is that we really need? Will money give us happiness? Will uh, all the things that we desire to, the multiplicity of desires, will they give us happiness? If this doesn't give us happiness, then what is that? And do can I relate to this? That is, yes, this is the sole purpose. That is, I want to be happy at the end of the day. So I'm always depending on the external sources of finding that sort of a happiness. So this is what is something which we have to understand and which we have to inculcate. This is not a mandate. This is not something which I have to prove. Because it is not science, it is an understanding. It's a kind of a living. I have to live with it and have to realize it. That is, is can I verify this? And so this question is open now, even for the students, that what is that you really want at the end of the day when you come back? Isn't it happiness? So, okay, over to you, Rukmani. So I took it, I took your time. Yes, so uh, the, I think a few years before, a young guy, uh, uh, age of uh, at the age of twenty five, 
had written a letter to a psychiatrist saying that, Sir, I am in depression. Can you save me? And what was his problem? His problem was that at the age of 21, 22, he finished his uh, bachelor in technology, in engineering. And then uh, he got a very uh, well-paid job, so-called well-paid job. And uh, he got married. And he says, today I have a small baby. Every day I go and come, I, I go to the company and come. I get a handsome salary, but my life is getting, I'm getting bored with this kind of a life. I feel like committing suicide. Now, what is this life? Did I waste all this life just to get a handsome salary? Is there something beyond that? So today's educational system, just, uh, uh, you know, hypnotizing the, I don't know whether I am right in using this kind of a word, uh, stating, uh, you know, telling students that time is money, time is money, don't waste your time, you know, uh, and today education is, uh, is become, uh, you know, is uh, synonymous with competition. In a competitive, cutthroat competition, 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 competition means what? I need to, uh, I need to defeat you. Who are you? Are you my enemy? In a class, you know, someone uh, in India, for example, uh, 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 I have a class, uh, the strength is 70, and a student came to me stating that, ma'am, I scored 99 marks. Uh, my mother told, where is that one mark? Where is that one mark? So what is education? Is this just a gathering of, uh, what is it? So mm -hmm. is education just all these things? I don't know. Well, I still you... remember, I still remember my father, when he retired, he retired at the age of 58. And uh, I told him, uh, oh, now you will be monitoring me every day asking me because you don't have anything to do. You will be asking me, are you not going to the college? You will wake me very early in the morning. Oh my God, I feel very jealous of you because you are a free man today. Then he did not tell me anything. He just smiled at me. And the next day morning, he said, now my life starts. Till yesterday, I did not do anything. I could not understand why. But later, he created an association. He was working in Indian Railways in an institution, right, as we are working. So in the institution, even if there are certain rules and regulations that you need to abide. But when you are out of the institution, you are free, uh, you are a free citizen. He created an organization and what he could not do when he was inside the uh, institution, he could do. He said, he, he uh, you know, he served, uh, he, um, he justified, he served uh, the lives of, uh, in, uh, you know, uh, the widows who are working in railways, the illiterate uh, women who did not know how much they were entitled when their husband dies, how much of money and salary they are entitled to. So a lot of injustice were taking place. In that way, he extended his services till his last day. Then I understood. Today, I, uh, you know, I, I always, I'm not comfortable if somebody addresses me as Dr. Rukmini. I say, no, don't say Rukmini also. I don't feel, uh, you know, very happy with the names, with the designations. Uh, PhD. Yesterday, I, I, I finished the viva verse of one of my scholars. So I told him that today you are called Dr. So-and-so, but PhD is just a passport. The real research in life is to look within and look at the realities and you know, the, the, the eternal values. So the, the magic that I felt is, uh, you know, when we look into these things, even when you stand in the class, this kind of uh, uh, self-inquiry gives you an unknown bliss. It spreads uh, positive vibrations within you. You need not fear about anything. 
for example, today, I don't keep any deadlines. No deadlines. Deadline means it is time bound. We are timeless and spaceless. When we are talking about eternity, the opposite of eternity is transient, mundane, whatever it is. Transient is time bound. We are not, if Rukmini has a birthday, she has a death day also. Then where is this transient? That's why I say don't get caught in with these identities. Identity crisis, I would say, in this post-humanistic age. It always creates binaries, binaries, binaries. And it so happened that, as uh, you know, Dr. Dana was uh, introducing uh, uh, me, uh, I did my ample on uh, uh, a saint's poetry. It's based on yoga. So when I, when I read everything, I feel that I have read everything. When I take pen and paper, nothing goes. Nothing goes. I stopped uh, meeting my uh, supervisor as well. After three months, he called me and said, Rukmini, are you dead or alive? I said, I am okay, sir. Then he said, what's your problem? Then I said, sir, I feel that I have read everything, but when I, when I take the pen, nothing goes close. Then he said, forget everything, just go. There is, um, what to say, a branch over there of that uh, saint that is called Ashram in uh, India. So go there, you sit, don't do anything. Every evening, go, sit, close your eyes. That's it. Go, sit, close your eyes. That's it. You forget who you are. You forget I am your supervisor. Forget the university. Forget everything. Because the poetry itself was like that. I was doing research on that kind of a poetry. So I was thinking, what is this man telling me? Yeah, he's my teacher. So I said, okay. And then I went every day I used to go. And there is a, a you know, meditation hour, six to seven in the evenings. So I used to every day go, I was quite young during that time. So what I used to do, six o'clock, they switch off all the lights and everybody sits for meditation. There will be around 40 to 50 um, people there. So uh, when they switch off the light at six o'clock and everybody closes the eyes, I was so tiny that I used to look at everybody. Is anybody opening one eye at least? <laughs> And then one day, first day, it was like that. Second day, it was uh, in a different way. Third day, my, oh God, they are going to switch off the lights. Now I'll feel, I fall asleep, huh? all this. Then fifth day, sixth day, I myself unconsciously, unknowingly closed my eyes. And I would then, uh, uh, my fear was, oh, hope nobody will disturb me. And then one day it so happened that I did not know the time. I was simply sitting very still, blissfully. And it went on and on for days together. Then that which I could not write unconsciously, I had you know, finished the entire chapter and given to my uh, supervisor. Today I don't claim that it was me who was written. It was out of the uh, you know, experience. So we say in English, you know, spiritual flux. I don't claim myself that I have written it. The same. So from then onwards, I felt that the bliss is within. And the bliss, you know, that cannot be equated to anything in this. Uh, it is, it, it cannot, it is incompatible in its nature. It is ineffable. It is indescribable. It is, so it is infinite in its nature. So from then onwards, I feel very uncomfortable in stating that I am this, I am this. I used to tell, even yesterday I was telling my students, if there is an I, then there is a you. I am your teacher. No, I, you. What is this I, you? No, no teacher, student. And for that matter, <clears throat> a poetical composition in this kind of an eternal education value system, eternal values in education system, in the Indian concept, the teacher says, Together we explore. Together we understand. So there is no dichotomy between the teacher and the student. Neither am I the teacher, neither you are the student. There is no learned and the learner. 
the learned and the learner is one together journeying to understand the infinite nature and then we understand that everything is one all pervasive so there is no dichotomy to to recite that it is said ishwara guru atma iti ishwara is god guru is teacher atma me i me so ishwara guru atma iti murti murti means identity murti bheda vibhagine there is no bheda there is no difference everything is one so that is called ishwara guru atma iti murti bheda vibhagine there is no difference that's why every uh, uh, upanishad talking about the self uh, it is the dialogue between the teacher and the student saying sahana vavatu sahana bunaktu saha viryam karavavahe saha means together together we explore together we journey together we do everything is together so nowhere there is a separation the i the only one enemy in this world is the feeling of i if we transcend i then we are everywhere so it's i me mine my word my nation my that my this i i and mine is the more, is the biggest and the first and the last enemy that we can ever have in this, our lives thank you thank you very much uh, i thank you. i also would like to mention that we have the opportunity to have students from not only from romania and india but we oh. have students from several countries great great because uh, ivana is from bulgaria mm -hmm. uh, paola is from venezuela wow. so we have different cultures and also i think i mean i don't know everyone but I know that uh, there are even students who study other foreign languages. So these cu cultural intersections mm -hmm. and uh, the, even the interest between business and yes. other areas mm -hmm. uh, are working together in ways that we can't even uh, always know. So please do. Uh, interact with our guests because we we don't only want to talk with them we can talk with them anyway <laughs> but we want you to i don't know express an idea don't feel shy please we also have a question in the chat for i mean if you need some time to think uh, there is a question from giovanni who who had to leave a, a bit earlier uh shall i read it if you want or it's like this. How can we foster a culture in an academic environment that ensures that enduring values are not just acknowledged, but actively embraced by students and teachers alike? Yeah, this is a question. So that's what I have been telling the teacher, mm -hmm. the learned and the learned. The yeah. object, the, so as I told you, when I was doing the uh, concept of poetry in MPhil, the whole research was on objectified and the objectifier. So where the uh, philosopher used to give an example, uh, you know, close all the, uh, switch off all the lights, sit in a room that is dark, put the candle, light the candle, you will feel, uh, you know, the light everywhere. And I did that and I was sitting, who is this a philosopher or saint who's telling this? I did not feel anything. But when I really started meditating and looking within, 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 and actually the real education is in silence. That's what, again, I would like to quote, Maunam Vyakya Prakatita Parabrahma Tattvam. Vidya, that is Vidya means education. Education, silence is education. In silence, the, that is education. So the teacher, you know, sits in silence and the students look at, looks at him. And then the blissful nature, you know, it's a silence. Maunam Vyakya. How did the teacher express? He expressed that in silence. 
So today's education, sorry to say, it is, I feel today after uh, looking into all these poetical compositions and all, uh, you know, Shakespeare has told life is full of fury, sound and fury. Now I, 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 I started uh, talking about education, that talking about education means, okay, go and earn money, read something, write something, learn something. It should eke out one's living and all these things. So today's education is full of sound and fury. Just nothing beyond that. So what is the real education? We are really missing the crux. See, when we are talking here today, we aren't talking about any complex anything. We are not talking about any kind of analysis, any kind of differences. So today, I, I, I assure you, we will be very peacefully, blissfully sleeping when you recollect all these things. So that is a there is a magic in that. It gives us more and more the right kind of energy. We rejuvenate ourselves. But slowly, slowly, we need to learn the magic. So learning the magic, one who has experienced it. So we need to and we need not only to acquire this kind of a knowledge, but the knowledge should be translated into experience. Simply, if I simply go on quoting the beautiful compositions and all, it will be mere words. For example, John Keats, you know, the, you know, the ode on a Grecian, he says, a thing of beauty is a joy for me. At the young age, when you look at the poem, looking at a Grecian urn, urn full of ashes of a, somebody who is dead how can that uh, that urn be beautiful and he says a thing of beauty is a joy forever now again coming to indian philosophy the beauty you know the ash is put on the forehead in india after all you are born somewhere i am born somewhere everybody is going to become the ash so the beauty is Birth and death, everything is is just, um, you know, uh, robes. That's what in, in the Gita says. How today I am in this dress, tomorrow I will change. So then what that is transient in its nature. Then where are we? Who are we? Does Rukmini exist? Rukmini is only identified in this body. Then who am I? So this kind of an inquiry is a meat of the art which will give uh, which is a panacea to all the conflicts and confrontations, all the ills that is prevailing in this uh, universe. Thank you. Uh, thank you. We also have a question from Daria, who is also a student uh, um, in uh, Hindi in the beginner's class. Mm -hmm. uh, and her quest question, um, well, uh, is about how uh, AI uh, will replace the true values of education. Uh, will it replace the true value? Will it impact the relationship between the student and, and the teacher? And I think it's a very, well, relevant question for every one of us. Thank you. I, 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 uh, in this, uh, I would like to tell you one thing. Uh, if you could get an opportunity, please Google search. There is a short film titled Anukul, and you are a Hindi. You can, uh, it is in Hindi, but it is trans. The, the stills are all in English, so anybody can watch it. So, Satyajit Ray, the well known uh, writer, Indian writer, he has, uh, you know, directed a short film. He's a script writer too. Uh, it is uh, titled as Anukul, where, you know, Satyajitra is of the previous century. And Anukul, the moral of the story is, there is a, uh, there is a, a, a person who hires uh, an AI uh, uh, to serve him. So the master and the uh, servant. And AI is uh, doing all the odd mean jobs, menial jobs. And AI, so this master is trying to teach AI all the emotional feelings of the humans. And one day uh, he says, um, AI says, what is this? Yesterday you taught me something in, uh, you caught, uh, you were catching some book, you looked at that book, you read something and you said, a oh God, who is this God? Then he says, God, he is all pervasive. So AI says, just like me, 
Yes, yes, just like me. I am also all pervasive. And a British writer, uh, Ian MacDonald, I feel, if I'm not mistaken, he has come, uh, he has written a book. Um, right now, I'm not able to recollect the title, but there is a story. It's a compilation of stories uh, where he has written India Vision, Vision India 2020, 2047 or something, where <clears throat> a wedding takes place. And, you know, uh, the day immediately after the wedding, uh, the couple is sitting and chatting together. In front of them, there is a television, which is telecasting. It's a giving a live telecast. And suddenly when this girl is talking to the boy, suddenly she notices in the TV his own image, her husband's image. And then she sees, what? Live telecast? Of whom? This person is sitting with me. How can that be a live telecast that, that the performance is taking somewhere else? And this girl asks, is it you? What is that? Do you have a twin or something like that? Then he says, no, 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 you're mistaken. It's me, he says. And then the girl is you know, completely nervous and she says, you cheated me. Uh, then he talks about different stages and then that leads to a spiritual, but, but that book, um, I, I don't know what the, the book is. title, I'm not able to, yeah, not, not, yes, yes, that is the writer, but nevertheless, I will, if you really want to read it, you know, I'll give you the title of the book, but so what I'm trying to say is the scientists also the writers also have envisioned this havoc before some years ago. I can give many anecdotes like this. Many, many anecdotes. Most so who who has the ability to foresee? Who has the ability to presage? Yeah, uh, somewhere uh, somebody says, um, you know. Uh, you ask him, uh, you are in India, you ask him what is happening, his mother is in America, what his mother is uh, doing. So once upon a time, my great grand uncle, uh, uh, he took me to a person saying that, you know, that is a, um, yeah, a grandfather is like you, uh, he will tell you what your friend is doing. I said, how can I? But he told me and I called my friend and the same thing happened. So the thing is, when I say there is no dichotomy, there is no binary. Uh, you, this, this is the uh, inward. Uh, we call today because of this kind of an education that is imparted in the other way. Uh, we say this is all fake. This is all dummy. This is all the other way around, and it is being politicized uh, or whatever it is. But the truth is, truth. Everything is one. So. We understand. For example, a mother tries to understand the child and you say, I know that you because you could say this. So if a mother can then so that's it. And to talk about uh, uh, Bucharest University of Economics, am I right? Yeah. So economics, when we talk about economics and the universalistic uh, principles, management and the unit, there are quite a number of abandoned uh, <clears throat> texts that talks about uh, personality, economics, ethics, you, uh, universalist, uh, universalistic values and all. Quite interesting. <clears throat> Indeed, uh, maybe we can uh, uh, do would, would would like students like to comment or you still. I have a question. <laughs> Please. Yeah. Um, do you hear me? Yes. yes. Um, first of all, I want to thank my teacher Dana to invite me to this uh, amazing um, meeting. I like it a lot. Uh, I feel very identified when. Uh, when she said, we said, she said about the the 
the expectations for young people like to make a lot of money to get a job to, it's a lot of stress that we have to deal for example me it's like uh, I have to pass all the 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 topics all the math I have to pass a uh, microeconomy I have to pass everything and I get I have to get a job I have to make money I have to find an apartment I have to and that's a lot of stress and many young people younger than me they are aging more more fast because of the stress mm -hmm. and now you can see uh I saw uh many many people with 15 that looks like 20 and they they are with a lot of stress and me also and I don't know how to deal with the that stress sometimes as it's very difficult and I I want to know uh how we can we can deal with that daily yeah very good uh, very uh, this is a very good uh what to say, inquiry into this self. I can say that this is the first step towards inquiry. How to be young always. So that's it. When I was quoting about the teacher and the student, you know, uh, there is a poetical composition, the same, the continuity of that, where he says, uh, you know, uh, the teacher is you, uh, young always while the students are aged. That means the eternal knowledge you know, there is no transient in it, the eternal knowledge. So one who, who, who imbibes, who inculcates, who imparts this knowledge, if you can really try to slowly inquire into within, and then, you know, the, 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 the positive vibrations, when you do not have any stress, any deadlines, Oh, yeah, if, if if at all somebody, some teacher is telling you, tonight you have to do this. Or you have some assignments or some kind of stress in life. These are all part of life. The world is not going to be doomed. This is all part of life. Take it very lightly. Do our best. That's it. Tomorrow early morning, I'm talking to you now. Tomorrow early morning, I have an uh, something to submit to my head of the department. Okay, why should I feel very stressed? Yes, it's part of my duty. I'm responsible for that. But still. But still. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. So when we become teachers, uh, why is it told that teaching is the noblest profession? Uh, when we, are, uh, of course, I'm talking to the University of Economics, so uh, uh, you need to excuse me in this case. I say, when you compare the other professions, a company, huh? I'm devoting one hour in the company. One hour, you have, per hour, you have to give me this, that, and all. But a teacher, yes, we are getting salaries. But do we, will you equate one concept with one uh, one dollar? Can you, can you count knowledge? How much of knowledge you are imparting? Can any teaching profession be, uh, uh, you know, um, measurable? Will you say, okay, uh, whatever salary I'm getting, uh, for this month I have finished imparting. So uh, from tomorrow, uh, you know, today is 25th. So six more days are there. My job is finished. So I'm not going to teach for the rest of the five, six days. But in the corporates and in the other uh, you know, sometimes even, sorry to say, even the medical profession sometimes do that. But a teacher doesn't do. Because, you know, when you experience, start experiencing the real knowledge. If, for me, for example, now, uh, you know, the time is uh, 9.45 p.m. night. But really, I'm feeling as if I'm sitting in the early hours. And talking to you these kind of uh, deeper, profound truths. I'm as fresh as, it, as I am. I feel like not going to sleep after this meeting, but still feel like, you know, taking up anything, any, this kind of a thing, a book, or uh, I always have the habit of uh, uh, listening to these kind of, uh, you know, lectures or very nice music that uh, pacifies me. 
so i am feeling what is this so after this meeting um, am i going to sleep is it night no 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 this is the beginning of my day i am so fresh so fresh really i am not joking i i feel uh, you know like working again you know throughout the night maybe sun is gone sun has kind of gone to america <laughs> now but uh, you know so that is uh, what i am telling you this kind of a uh, Uh, a transient in nature, whether it is objects or uh, whatever it is, the attachments we hold to that, that we need to tell the mind, hey, idiot, why should you think that it is nine forty-five? The mind is trying to control. Hey, Rukmini, once after this meeting is over, you sleep. It is night now, but my inwardness is telling, no. no you are as fresh as you are in the early hours you can do some productive works yes then i say no mind no no you you be aside you don't talk to me so what is this inward conflict this is the mind the mind always tends to analyze analyze and analyze so as swayam so ma'am has told this is all inbuilt in us it's innate in us but we are trying to veil it it is already veiled we need to unveil it so by constantly these kind of discussions attending these kind of discussions deliberations listening to various lectures and all we will be rejuvenating we will be recollecting yes 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 and one day we become that so that's why practice makes man perfect and experience is the best teacher knowledge is not the best teacher what happens you ask me some question oh i have read it somewhere you ask me to recite a poem ah ta 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 i read i recited that is happening in the educational institutions in the primary uh, sections and all okay uh, i taught you this poem that uh, and then you you have to recite once the child recites you give 10 on 10 if the child does not recite or forget somewhere some words the child needs to really understand the meaning of that for example in uh, as i told you uh, a thing of beauty is a joy forever if shelley says if winter comes can spring be far behind paula uh, you are right he says if winter comes can spring be far behind that is if the one difficulty comes i am i am uh, you know going through this kind of a difficulty uh-huh. after uh, winter uh, winter finishes spring will come to you so after one difficulty there is something good for you that is going to happen thank you so it's like you know, it's a it's a it's a life cycle process today is a good day tomorrow if it is we ourselves are defining that as bad and good there is nothing in this universe called bad and good we are defining it how can something be bad or how can something these are all man made um, you know definitions we then we ourselves are conditioned we name our own self somebody is talking about ah oh my god if i talk like this what is he going to think who is he to think right we always tend to look into the external factors what did you do look within yeah also mm. possibly it mm. you will see because you are all very young you yes. will see that your um, ambitions expectations learning and even the stress they change mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. cannot see it now because you're just at the, the beginning of the professional life mm-hmm. yes but you will see gradually exactly. and i cannot say exactly maybe professor sarpati can say uh but i think both men and women get stressed but in different ways most men do feel probably more inclined to be stressed because they want to be equally competitive to all the other businessmen uh, lawyers 
uh, and so on and so forth. Women, even in most democratic countries, they try to be competitive between themselves, but also with men. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, we cannot deny that still women have a, um, they spend more time at home with, when they have a family than generally men do. So the, uh, there is more stress because of this as well. Also, sometimes parents expect daughters to be more hardworking than if they have a son. Some, not all parents, but some parents, yeah? So it, it is a very a complex mixture and it changes a long time. And I think that once you go through different, uh, maybe institutions or even change occupation, I know people who uh, abandon stress. I know people who worked in uh, corporations. Many young people in Romania want to work in multinationals. Some of them abandoned that career later after mm -hmm. 35 or so because they felt it was too much. And they went into a different kind of work. Some are, I don't know, bloggers, freelancers, artists, all sorts of things. And they found a balance in between what makes me happy, as uh, Swayam said, and what the society wants from me. And the society is either the professional community or my family. Uh, and even if let's say a person is single, uh, the person is still related to others. Maybe a person only has one pet. Still, it is a responsibility. Yeah. So this changes. And of course, the question is <clears throat> even to look at your own experience, they say, where can I be more satisfied with what, what I gain and what I want? Uh, it's, um, many years ago, my husband had a job and I was not very pleased with his status. And after some time, I said, don't you want to try to move to another job? I said, because I'm, I'm, I'm not very, you know, to tell others you're not, you know, uh, not exactly as high as me, but not as comfort. And then he asked me, I mean, his reply was very short, but I never expected that idea. And he said, Dana, I don't want to uh, get a, a very high salary and not to have the time to spend it. And then I said, true. <laughs> so I say, Yes, you change the position, you can get more money, but the question is if that if the a high salary, a high pay will not mean it will completely absorb you. You have no time for yourself. But it, there is no right answer. Each of us has to find the balance during time. And maybe, Swayam, you can comment because I know you work with so many women, and not only women, but because you, she is a trainer in the professional, in all sorts of academics and other professions. And I think this experience of being a trainer, but also a professor, again, you, you complement different types of work. You learn and you give. So can you tell us if, how is your experience with the communities you work with yeah thank you so much dana actually coming to what paula is asking that's the question you know uh, as uh, dana very rightly mentioned trainer and also counselor i've been counseling very recently my nephew as well you know so the stress that she's talking about i think that's the kind of thing every one of us has every of the i mean student fraternity so because and you can't let go of it. Can you, Paula, by any means, you can let go of your uh, task in economics, in mathematics, and uh, will you not like to get a good job? Isn't it? So you would definitely like to get a good job. Yeah, so future. for this, these are certain steps that you are getting into. So why does it uh, cause stress? Because you're not able to balance. You're you are thinking that I will get all at once. 
So what is within me? I can make an effort towards it. So my effort towards getting something is not an outcome of a competition. I'm not competing with anybody out here. That you have to understand. I'm working towards excellence. Now, what is this excellence? That is, I know my potential and I know uh, the definite conduct that I'm having. I know that I will do these things. This is my agenda. Till I fulfill my agenda, I have to work on these subjects and these subjects will let me to my, uh, you know, the goal that I'm looking forward to. So why I need to be stressed? I'm stressed when I'm trying to compete with others. He got something. Say, for example, Mr. A got, my colleague does better than me. I'm not able to do it. Or this, uh, this time I would get better marks, but unfortunately I lost. So I'm contemplating on things more than I'm working on the things. So what is important for me is to work on the things. Despite all the eternal, uh, you know, uh, aspects, this is always, you know, there is some kind of a universal, uh, you know, uh, some kind of a, a universal uh, entity which is working for us. But that is not uh, there right in front of us. What is in front of us is the duty and the things that I have kept for myself. I want to be, a, um, uh, say, a kind of economist. So I have to learn economics. I cannot let go. And the sub the subject which are related to economics also has to be learned by me. So why does it cause stress? So if you realize, so stress will be only an outcome of some sort of a competition. So now understand that, that we are working towards excellence. So if I'm working towards my excellence, I map my potential. So I will not try to, you know, supersede anybody or I will not uh, be again depressed when someone gets uh, you know, some marks or something like that. I will work towards my goal because I understand this is my goal. And these are all the parameters which I have to cross. Now you want cross, uh, you want to come to India. Definitely you need a visa, you need a passport and uh, whatever is the difficulty there, but you have to do. And let me uh, share the experience. I think Dana knows when I was coming to Romania, there were just two days for me to go and I was yet to receive my, uh, you know, visa. My confirmation was not coming. So, but then at that time, if I would be stressed and uh, so I would do everything as it would all get messed up, but I have to keep my balance. And uh, uh, let me tell you, you know, uh, stress always creates a positive vibe also. There is a lot of positive, uh, positive, uh, you know, uh, things that comes on. And when you are, stressed, you will see that you work much better. Okay. Uh -huh. So this is what we have to understand. Not uh, We are not here to compete with each other. We are here to work for excellence. And these are certain parameters which we are working on to reach our goal. Now, supposing you get an apartment for yourself and then you say, no, this is not sufficient. I want another. That would be a difficulty. That would cause more stress because you have to live in one apartment. You don't really need the second one. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? So I have to have this understanding that how much of it I need. Yeah. Okay. So that will help you to you know, get out of stress. Thank you a lot. Uh, a lot of the stress uh, also comes from the fear from the failure, fear uh, from failure. Uh, yes. So why do you fear to fail? If I don't succeed a uh, 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 topic uh, like math, I mean, for example, that I am not good at math, so I have to go on July and that's a problem and I feel bad because I'm I'm not that as good to pass in the uh, okay. So uh, does it is it like that that it is impossible to get through maths? So the fear it's not is more impossible. about the subject? Yeah, or is it the fear about uh, not getting, uh, you know, up to the mark with my other friends who are there with me? What no, is the no. fear about? It's the fear about myself. It's, I don't care about, about being others. better than others. I, I care about me. I care if I pass. I want to pass. I want to understand. So what will help you to pass? I, I think make courses of math and this month. 
maybe no. uh, what will make you pass is first to remove that fear factor okay and keep this in mind that is i'm not good at maths just replace it with i'm good so the thing is you know there is a working of neuro linguistic programming mm -hmm. whatever we train our minds our minds work accordingly now when i'm saying i fear maths i'm not able to co comply i will i'm not able to get good marks i might fail and i have to again join the next uh, session so that might be difficult for me so i have already created a belief system in within myself that it is a difficult subject so i have to first take it out so this neuro linguistic programming when we teach we say that we do not use any kind of a negative terms i'm not good me i'm i'm not i'm good as others i'm good for uh, to do maths so this will 50% it will remove the fear secondly you have to see that by telling that i fear maths i might fail it will not help you what will help you is practicing take the help of your friends take the help of your mentors whoever can help you in that because this something which is needs uh, needs a lot of analytical skills okay so this analytical skills being a student so i'm sure you have a lot of analytical skills okay thank you so this kind of you have to replace certain terminologies within your mind you know these belief systems make us more our subconscious mind always rules over our conscious mind when we start telling that i'm not good at this i won't be able to do this so you have to replace everything that yes uh, at this time uh, this is some difficulty i'm facing but this will not linger i will try and do it okay so take the help of mentors see your how much of time are you devoting to maths or you are sitting aside looking at the maths textbook and waiting that how this maths will come into me so you have to find out that as well so if you are sitting and trying to solve something so solutions may not be abrupt may not be overnight but it will gradually come to you so you will know that whom should i ask for help whether it is my mentor will help me or my friends will help me so from where do i get and then once again come back and do it so this is just a kind of mental preparation it is all between mind and matter if i don't if i mind everything matters if i don't mind nothing matters so this is what i have to understand so remove yes. all these preconditions from your mind that i am not able to do it i am able to do everything because thank i have you. the same potential which everyone has right so thank yes. you paula and all the very best and i'm sure next time when we are meeting either virtually or uh, in person so i'm sure you will be saying that i've got very good marks in maths thank you anand yeah so oh, very nice so do we have any other questions from the rest of the students uh, i have a comment oh super right uh, I would like to let you know that I truly enjoyed the presentation. I'm so glad that I was offered the opportunity to participate as I found the content really interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, all of the information uh, all of the information brought into discussion was absolutely useful and uh, informative and of course um it made me reflect on uh, how these values uh, play a considerable role in our uh, educational journey. So um thank you so much for uh, the effort you put into it. Thank you. Thank you for your participation. If there are no other questions, uh, I think we can all thank our guests. Yes, of course. And I hope they will be with us again. <laughs> and I hope that no matter what country we are from, we try to find others because I think, and especially with technology, we have such a chance to find others from other countries. So I mm. found uh, Professor Satpasi and Rukmini because we have access to internet. Yeah. So while we enjoy Facebook and all the social media, I have all the others uh, in, you know, all they have pleasurable, there is a lot to learn from with the support of technology. Try to find those like you there. It's, you know, billions of people. 
And you will see that there is so much we can give. Yes. Tell them about, you know, the experience of, I don't know, certain Romanian profession, professionals or Bulgarians or uh, Venezuela or I know Madalina is passionate about Turkey. Yeah. So there are, uh, and all these countries, they have plenty of things to learn and they also need to learn about our countries and cultures. And then all these connections will take us exactly where uh, Rukmini mentioned, becoming more, uh, you know, part of the humanity and not only to focus on the, you know, uh, idea of differences just as, you know, a, a, an expression of the ego, yeah? To feel together, to find ways to work together, yeah? Because as we know, and even in so many, I think all in all cultures, the power of the community, the power of groups is always better than the power of one person. So thank you very much to everybody. And thank I know so it much. is very late, thank you. but I think, uh, I hope you will dream, all of you will, I don't know, enjoy dinner or dream or listen to music as Rukmini mentioned. <laughs> yes, <laughs> probably, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So it's almost at, uh, I think, five past 10. Uh, five 10. past 10. <laughs> so oh, I think uh, we wait. can, uh, you know, get back to our own uh, some sort yes. of work so yeah. thank you so much it was thank a pleasure you. meeting yes. all of you and the students of course from all over the places it's a great experience thank you dr dana thank, thank you elena thank, thank you dr rukmani uh for uh you know enlightening us with such a beautiful uh you know subject and uh thank you all thank you so much thank you we can learn to say this is not complicated to say Shub Ratri. Ratri. <laughs> Ratri. <laughs> so yes. uh, Ratri. quiet <laughs> a nice evening. Uh, so Shub Ratri is in Hindi, but because I don't know how you say in Tamil. <laughs> this is a real teacher altogether. This is a real so Shub Ratri and Namaste. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again. And when the recording is ready, I will disseminate to everyone. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Good Bye. night. And right. enjoy dinner if you didn't have it yet. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you. you. Welcome. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.